why don't you show me what you're building at Adept AI Labs? And thanks for the little diversion down uh, history lane there. So the super fascinating. Hole. Yeah, for sure. So first, let me tell you a little bit more about what we're up to and why I'm really excited about it. And then we can quickly uh, flip through some some demos of a release we actually recently did last week. The North Star for Adept uh, from day one actually has been that in the long term, the thing that'd be the most valuable thing to build for work is an AI agent that uh, does much more than reading and writing and drawing images, but can actually handle for you arbitrary work tasks and workflows, right? And those two things are very different, right? Like uh, reading and writing is not the ability for you to say, be able to delegate your entire like payments process to a neural network. In the latter case, what you really want is you want a system that knows how to use all the software you already have on your computer as if it were you. And in order to get there, you need to train these models that uh, deeply understand not just the uh, text, but also the pixels on your screen and also what actions lead to what outcomes in the world. And so we've been hard at work on this training this model that could do anything a human can do on a computer. And we've been uh, building effectively a product that enables knowledge workers to arbitrarily delegate tasks to the system. Here's a quick demo example. Um, in this case, uh, uh, let's say you're responsible for paying invoices and you get your plumbing invoice. You fire up a debt, debt pulls up the invoice, it's all being done by the model right now, pulls up the invoice, reads the pixels in this PDF, realizes what it's about, stores some interesting facts about this, and then pulls up QuickBooks. And then correctly enters who is the who is the payee, right? Savant plumbers, like uh, how did you pay? Um, what what category is this? Like, and it realizes the category was never written in the PDF, but it realizes a plumbing invoice, so it should go into repairs and maintenance. And um, this task that you probably would have had to do like ten or twenty times a day for your job, you show Adept how to do it once, and now every time you get a new email invoice, uh, you just fire up Adept and it handles this task for you. And it's all so. Powered. Where does Adept live? It's, is it in your system tray there, or how, how does it? You yeah. know, intercept this coming in by via email because you have this invoice come in via email. You got to get yep. it paid. Yep. You're in uh, yep. purchasing uh, yep. or accounting. Boom. It, it needs to know. So, how was it just sitting there in the background running? It lives as an overlay, as an extension right now, but we'll soon release a desktop uh, overlay as well. And so, I think the key of this is we're not forcing you to use this brand new system. It's a helper for all the same workflows it's you are. It's a co pilot. Yeah. Exactly. It's a co pilot. Yeah, and so it's so, sitting going to sit in the system tray, but right now it sits in your browser window in your or browser something. Browser window, yep. Yeah. And so you can delegate arbitrary tasks to it right now. I'll show you show you another example. It's actually a similar variant, but like one of the most common things people do is people shuttle data back and forth between system A and system B, and Worse, a lot yeah. of a lot of knowledge worker jobs is just doing that like ad nauseum, right? Um, we had a uh, we we're talking to some customers who um, their insurance agents have to go log on to five different software systems to be able to pull the requisite data to even get one quote done. And so this next example is one where you get an, uh, where you get an email from uh, someone who's for filing a claim and Adept basically, uh, once you show Adept how to do it once, automatically fills out all and populates all of the forms involved there. You know, what's interesting about, about Adept is that it's actually been a really easy way for us to start working on this, like what I think is gonna be the next battlefield of AI. Right. So far, it's been about LLMs, but I think what's what's coming up is it's going to be about multimodality, which is the ability to understand images, and it's going to be about building AI agents because AI agents, as defined as a model that could take a series of steps to achieve a goal, is I think fairly clear to everybody in the field now. The thing we have to get right to get like tremendous value out of these underlying smart systems. Yeah. So agents, uh, if we were to explain them, these were like wizards. I think in the early windows days you would create a win you take a you would create either a wizard or a business process and all of this is done offshore business process outsourcing is a big part of this yeah people send their accounting to india they send their data entry to manila whatever it happens to be and this is just taking that same concept and instead of doing it with just brute force humans uh, offshored millions of them working uh, in lower income or lower cost of living uh, locations the person who's in the US doing their desktop can just have it happen in seconds, huh? It's a really easy way. Yeah. So our first step as a company is we've been working on some of these capabilities that let you as a worker every day just delegate um, these tedious tasks. But where we're really going with this and what I'm and why uh, what I'm excited about is being able to do tedious tasks is actually just a building block for what's even more valuable, which is effectively having an AI teammate that you can talk to at work, bounce ideas off of each other get guidance. It has the same context as you do because it's, uh, it's, it's, it sees all the same stuff on screen and, you're, and, uh, and you're, what you do at your company and all that stuff. 
and then like helps you brainstorm and come up with the best ideas and maybe try some of them and you're like, well, maybe this one's a little bit better. I think all of that uh, lies on top of a foundation of being able to do arbitrary things, arbitrary tedious things on your computer. How close, which are, you to having, how close are you to having this in market? Is this like uh, in beta somewhere? Are people using it yet? Yeah. So, um, you know, what's been interesting this year is that, um, is that the agent space has really suffered from reliability problems. If you go look at the space as a whole, I think there was an information article about like the agent winter or something like that. It's because most of these systems, the ones built on top of GPT are like 60% accurate. Like they work 60% of the time, one out of 10 times, maybe it deletes half your records in Salesforce. And you're like, I can't use this at work. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, with Adept, we spent the whole summer unlike everybody else, training our own foundation models in-house that deeply understand the pixels on screen are tuned for generating actions. And that took us to a point where this fall, we now have actually very reliable agent models uh, once we have some custom fine-tuning data per use case. So um, we're excited to announce, there will be later uh, an announcement about um, one of our really large first deployments. But we also actually last week took everything we built for our enterprise customers, cut out the specific fine-tuning uh, that made them their stuff super accurate, and then just made it into a sandbox anyone can play with. And so this thing's called Adept Experiments. You can check it out at adept.ai slash experiments. And, uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a super powerful first toy automation tool. Um, funny thing is actually this morning, uh, someone sent me a post on Upwork hiring people who were experts in using Adept Experiments to automate workflows. Oh. So it's, it's already getting some very cool traction on, on the agent space now. So the idea is in, you're going to build this platform, but we as people operating businesses will make our own agents and for ourselves, or we're going to make agents and have the ability to, to publish them. Yeah. So our main, as a company, um, we're actually very enterprise focused. So we're currently doing larger engagements where we just come in and work with our company and figure out how uh, the adept agents could just accelerate the knowledge work that's happening there. But um, this experiments framework that we made is an, is an easy way for you or me or any of our friends to pick up and just try what it might be like to go automate something. And then you can publish them and share them with people like uh, ChatGPT is doing? Ah, soon, yeah. Great. We'll soon be able to let you share. Uh, so far, that didn't quite make the MVP. And so that becomes a business model, like an app store in your mind. So if I am uh, really good at accounting, I can kind of make these tools, build the classifier engine for where it should live or whatever, and then publish it to the web and maybe share revenue with you. Is that part of the model? Uh, it's not the focus of our model. The focus of our model oh. is these like making enterprises really successful. But um, what's really interesting about what you just said, though, is that like, we hope that in an enterprise setting, you know, um, oftentimes like custom knowledge is locked in some people's brains, right? Yep. Like this. There's one person, well, at our company, there's like maybe three people that know how to configure this particular infrastructural dashboard. And they could just teach a dep how to do that and just publish that workflow to everybody at the company. So whenever that needs to be reconfigured, you just hit play on that and, yeah. uh, and it does it for you. So I'm excited about sharing in that setting. All right. You've heard me talk about Arising Ventures a bunch recently. They are a holding company. They acquire tech startups that uh, you know are facing some headwinds, some setbacks, and they give these startups a second chance at life, which is awesome. So if you're going through some tough times right now and you're trying to get back on solid footing, well, reach out to the team at Arising Ventures. Could be just what your startup needs to get back on track. They've helped companies like UpCouncil, up counsel they took from burning a million a month and shrinking to profitable and growing. And Jive, where they relaunched a shutdown company, went from zero to one million in ARR in just five months. What a save. In fact, two saves. Listen, Rising Ventures knows what founders care about because they're not bankers. They are tech founders themselves, and they're here to help your startup get back on track. Learn how Arising Ventures can help give your company new life by visiting arisingventures.com slash twist today to learn more and connect with the team. That's arisingventures.com slash twist.